Greetings, Embers, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If you would like to learn how to become a member of the channel or would like to buy me a coffee, those links can be found down below. Also, if you are new here or you have been here already and haven't done so yet, please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Not only does it help the channel out, but it also reminds you of every time I upload a video. With all of that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in and get warm, and prepare for this dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Ouija Board Stories. Right after this intro an ad will play, or read the first story an ad will play, and after that there will be no more ads within this video. Oh, and a quick side note, I posted it over on the community tab, but if you would like to join in on the fun, I started a subscriber written story in which I wrote the first two sentences and you all take it from there. Please head over and add your two or three sentences to the story. It doesn't matter what it's about, cursing is allowed, and have fun. I can't wait to see what we all come up with. This project is due by next Sunday, which will be January 14, 2024. Those who participate, your name will appear in the credits. On with the video now, shall we? When I was in my senior year in high school, one of my friends had a Ouija board that we would play with often. One night, we decided to play the Ouija board at the cemetery because we wanted to see what would happen. We believed in the paranormal to some extent, but we were also skeptical. We just wanted to have a good time and hopefully get spooked. We specifically liked this cemetery because it was the easiest to sneak into. Its fence was a very short wall that you could just hop over. There were recently dug places for new burials that were going to happen. We played a couple times and spoke to some ghosts. Nothing really scary or weird. We asked them if they were alone when they died, what their names were, etc. While playing, we started sensing this really awful smell, like rotten eggs and dead animal. We looked around and we assumed it was just the holes that were dug up. We eventually left because we got bored and the smell was atrocious. When we got into the car, we shook our shoes off and started to sanitize our hands. That smell suddenly appeared out of nowhere, really strong. It smelled like death. We kept putting hand sanitizer on our hands, and when we would sniff them, it still smelled like death. After realizing that the smell would not leave our hands, we all got this sudden chill, and we started screaming. We were screaming inside my friend's car like little girls from a high school horror movie. We finally calmed down and my friend turned the engine and we bolted out of there. We eventually started laughing because the whole ordeal was pretty funny and we got what we wanted. But I will never forget that awful smell and how it would not leave us. This is my first time sharing this story, and it's also the last solution I have found to hope to have an explanation to what I've experienced. In my life, I have neither seen or felt something I could classify as paranormal, yet I believe in paranormal exists, except what I decided to call the window episode and some Ouija tests. So here's my story. It must have been during high school, I was at home just after being left alone by my father and brother, so I decided to make something to eat for myself. That's when I heard it. Some rather strong knocks against my window. I assure you I was convinced my father or brother were back to get something they would have forgotten and just warned me of their presence. There had to be someone around the window. But nobody. There was nothing. I checked all the windows in the house, still nothing. So I just froze for a few seconds, not understanding what happened. Bugs? It's impossible for an insect to cause such a loud noise, and this multiple times. Birds? 
A bird could have caused a noise like this by smashing against the window, but it's pretty weird to imagine several birds rushing against the same window. It could be funny, though. The wind? No, the wind can't produce a noise like this. It was really like a human hand knocking. It can be the neighbors, but they are at the opposite of where my brain has located the sound and I have definitely recognized the noise that my windows can produce. I have thought about this during at least more than one year, searching for any explanations. Still nothing. But there are two elements drawing my attention in this episode. First, I heard the noise a bit after been left alone, as if the thing that caused the noise was heading towards me and just waited for me to be alone to show up. Then, I recently noticed that the window episode coincides with the period where I made Ouija with friends. It wasn't a really troubling experience. The glass was moving, forming more or less credible answers, that's all. But if the window's noise is linked to my Ouija experiences, I admit it's a bit more troubling. I have talked about this with the friends I had made the Ouija board with. None of them gave me other explanations. I haven't told this to my family. I'm not even sure they would take it seriously. So I think you are my last option to have an explanation. Just tell me what to do. Do you think this is paranormal? Is there an explanation? Maybe a ghost guy just decided to follow me. It could be anything, but any of your answers will surely keep me sane until this gets explained. Tried to contact paranormal entities, and some not-so-fun things happened. So, this is the time my friends and I decided to be extra stupid. And I say this because I want all who hear this to understand that I, as well as my friends, now fully understand how dumb we really were. The important backstory for this is the location. Proctor Valley. Proctor Valley is in San Diego County and connects the town of Ote and Jamul. It is a protected wildlife area, so no houses, no business, no buildings. It is situated between a prominent mountain with hilly edges boxing in the valley. It is said that this valley is a center for the unexplained. Stories range from lights in the sky, ghost cars, ladies in white, random screams, the usual stories that surround almost every isolated dirt road. The place is surrounded with rumors. It is, however, in actuality, a very dangerous place. Being situated closely to the U.S. and Mexico border, it is a frequently used pathway for drug smuggling, and being it's an isolated dirt road on the outskirts of a major city, other, um, things tend to go on down there. You have your usual terrible things like sexual assault, carjackings, murders, lots of bad things. But one murder stands out. The apparent poisoning of a teenage girl in a blue floral dress. Never identified. Found barefoot on the side of the dirt road. Okay, now to my experience. I had driven down the dirt road late at night several times with friends just for fun. The place has very few trees, let alone any large ones. But about midway down the road, there is a very large tree hanging halfway over the road. This tree has always given me a bad feeling, so I never felt comfortable stopping there to explore. However, this night, I was determined. I once and for all had to know if this place had something weird going on. I wanted my own experience, and I wanted it badly. I had dug up my family's old Ouija board and studied for weeks on the proper use of the board, how to get the results you want, the whole shebang. We purchased the correct candles and found the most purest salt we could find, and we drove out to the road. This ended up being a bit of an event as about 10 people showed up. Four of us used the Ouija board, two filmed, and four satin lawn chairs. Once we all get ready, 
we began. I, being dumb and unoriginal, figured we would go straight to demon land and try to anger a demon and contact it. Which demon? Pazuzu. Again, I was dumb and unoriginal. Well, after we initially started, we heard what sounded like orchestral music being played. Being on the road, we figured it was another car driving down it in the distance and would wait for it to pass to continue because it would be a bit awkward if somebody drove by and saw a bunch of people summoning demons. We waited 25 minutes and no car, no headlights, no noise besides the music. A bit confused, some scared, we continued. The planchette was moving, but based on the answers, someone had to be moving it. So when a random twig snapped and everyone jumped out of fear, I just stayed with my fingers on the planchette. One person, the person moving the planchette, got too scared and opted out. So I and two others braved on. I did my best to anger whatever could be out there, and to my surprise, we finally got a response. There was no more music being played, and the piece was moving. I had asked, is anyone or anything here with us that would wish to communicate? And the piece moved to yes in a very slow, smooth way that honestly felt terrifying. It felt like it was being dragged across the board, not like someone was pushing or sliding it. With the confirmation of something wishing to speak, I moved to the next question. Are you Pazuzu? Same feeling as the planchette moves. No. My heart sunk. I was thinking, okay, well, I got something biting. Let's see what this thing is. I see everyone is fixed on the board, eyes locked in. I ask probably the next logical thing most people would ask. Are you a good spirit? Then the two phones that were being used to film the event turned off. They then wouldn't turn back on and the planchette begins to move. It glides over to the letter G and we all let out a big, phew. Everyone was relieved it was going to spell good. It then unsurprisingly moves to O. More confirmation to us, it's spelling good. But then it stopped. Nothing. No movement at all for over five minutes. It was telling us to leave. I ask, do you want us to go? And as I finish the question, my friend drops to her knees. She is screaming and crying. I move the planchette to goodbye. I say it and I rush to her and ask what happened. She said someone was walking over to us and pointed down the road. I look down and all I saw was a cloud of dust roll off of the road about 15 feet away. This was the most honest person I had ever known and decided right then and there we were leaving. She described the person walking towards us as having dark hair, long limbs, but no distinguishing facial features. They walked like a video game character, glitching with their stride, definitely didn't match the pace at which they were moving and their feet never seemingly touched the ground. When she looked at it, she said it felt every emotion she had ever felt come over her. She equated it to the feeling of your family dying while you win the lottery on your wedding day. This was almost two years ago. Any of my friends still refuses to go out at night. I tried a year ago, and she just cried in the car the whole time, saying, He's getting closer. Yes, she has been going to therapy for this specific incident. I don't know what she saw that night, but I personally don't want to find out. I have not returned to that road since. I tucked away and hid the board, and it went missing six days later to the day. Along with the candles and the books, if you made it this far into my story, thank you. This is a true story. I really wished it wasn't. I honestly don't know what happened that night. I don't really want to know. But there is something there. And as I'm currently looking for the video from that night, I get chills every time I think I'm getting close to it. But yet, find nothing.
Strange things have been happening in our little two-bedroom flat, and we were hoping to gain perhaps some insight, or maybe a different perspective on our experiences. So, for starters, I'm a practicing pagan, and have been most of my life. I am no stranger to the paranormal. I regularly sage our home, or bless it with burning incense. We frequently have windows open, allowing a through breeze to whisk away any negative energy. I have a lot of experience with Ouija boards and seances. What I'm trying to say is, I'm not new to this kind of thing, but I'll be damned if it's not freaking me out. I moved into the flat on the 14th of December of 2018. When we came to view the flat, I immediately felt a positive energy. It was like I belonged here with my little one. The energy remained positive for the longest of times, and little things happened. For example, I'd put my phone down in the living room, popped to check in on my daughter, came back and my phone would be nowhere to be found. I would spend the next 10 to 15 minutes searching for it everywhere, to no avail. Then I'd go back to where I had left it and, yeah, you guessed it, there it would be. Now, of course, this could be put down to simple absent-mindedness on my part, but after it happening not only to me, but also my fiancé and friends who regularly visit, I'm inclined to believe it's something a bit more. I own a Ouija board, just a cheap little thing. I store the board in my living room, currently on the bookshelf and the planchette in the kitchen with my other witchy bits. It would frequently fall off the bookshelf, or the fireplace, or the TV shelf, regardless of how it was placed, and for this I have no logical explanation. One night, after my fiancé had moved in, our daughter was at her dad's for the weekend, and my mom was over for dinner, and we did a seance. My mom and I have conducted and participated in many seances over the years. So we're not just kids messing about. I cannot stress this enough. We were slow to start. The energy was low, but we soon had something coming through. But it was sluggish and easily confused. It was finally able to tell us that it was not alone and that something was stopping it from communicating with us. Whatever was stopping it came through stronger and started asking us to lend it our souls. Uh, nope. After a while, without much more contact, we closed the seance and I staged the shit out of the flat, just to be safe. And at first, it seemed to have worked, until a couple of weeks ago, when lockdown started. Our little girl frequently gets into bed with us, she's three by the way, and we co-slept until we moved in here, when she was nearly two. We have times where she spends most of the night in her bed. But since lockdown started, she wakes up two to three times a night and gets into bed with us. Her room is right next door. There is a light from the bathroom, so it's not too dark and she has never had a problem walking from her room to ours, often without us even realizing she got into bed with us. The bedroom doors did not slam. The carpet is too thick at the bottom, and they're fire doors with a chain that causes them to close slowly. We have tried to slam the door to our bedroom. It just won't slam. This is important. Another important tidbit. My fiance sleeps like the dead. She never wakes up to our daughter at night. But a couple of weeks into lockdown, my fiance woke up to our daughter crying and what sounded like a little person's footsteps on the laminate flooring in the hallway. But wasn't fully awake until our bedroom door slammed. She got out of bed to see where Little had gone, and she was in her room, as far away from the bedroom door as she could possibly be. When Little saw my fiancé, she shouted that she wanted mommy and ran right past her and straight into our room, into bed with me. She has no history of sleepwalking. The next morning, we talked about what had happened. I had very uncharacteristically, slept through the whole thing, up to little getting into bed with me. It's important to note that I have always done 
every night wake up. I wasn't especially tired. There's just no reason for me not to have woken up like normal, and yet I slept through it. We came to the conclusion that firstly, the door should not have slammed, particularly if Little had pushed it open slightly to get into bed with us. Secondly, why did she run out of the room instead of just getting into bed with us as normal? And thirdly, why was she cowering in the corner of her bedroom? Another important tidbit. Our daughter and my fiancé have a wonderful relationship and has zero reason to fear either of us. She has never reprimanded for getting into bed with us or waking us up. Very creepy shit, and it gets spookier. Later that day, we were all sitting in the living room, and our daughter's phone, used for Paw Patrol and Kid Puzzles, that was on the fireplace, fell rather violently without any rhyme or reason. We were still sitting down. Daughter wasn't jumping about. Our neighbors weren't banging on the wall. There is no reason for her phone to have fallen. There have been times where the living room door, which stays open when pushed all the way, has randomly slammed with no breeze or anything that might have caused it to close. And then tonight, Little woke up. I went in to soothe her back to sleep. She had kicked her covers off, so I pulled them back over her. Then she woke up again, talking about a monster under her bed and asking me if she was safe in her bed. She has a mid-sleeper, so there's space under her bed, but she has never worried about monsters being under there. I just wanted to share our story and maybe gain some outside perspective on it. We'll keep this updated if anything else happens, but I cleansed the flat today, so I'm hoping that does the trick. Okay, so I have to tell a story that my mom told me a while back. It was her experience with a Ouija board. And my mom wouldn't make something like this up. The whole reason she even told me about it was because I brought up the idea of using one to contact a younger brother who had passed away. Anyway, her story freaked me out enough to never, ever use one. Back when she was in high school, late one night... Her and a group of her friends were cruising around on gravel roads a few miles outside of town. I live in a small town in Iowa. And they stopped at an old abandoned barn and decided to whip out an old Ouija board one of her friends had. My mom had a really bad feeling right off the bat and said she wasn't going to do it. Well, everyone kept calling her a sissy and saying it won't work unless everyone who was there plays. So my mom was convinced, but on one condition. She'd play if they didn't ask sketchy questions. Some of the guys laughed it off and made the promise not to. So they all gathered around on the floor of the barn and placed their hands on the slider of the board. They asked some basic questions about, Is there anyone there? What's your name? Things of the like. No response. Then, a guy named Terry asked, which one of us will be the first one to die? And my mom pulled her hands off the board and said, that is not funny. She was super pissed and everyone screamed at her to put her hands back on the board. As soon as she put her hands back on, the planchette moved and spelled out the initials of a boy who was there. CJ. I can't remember his last name. And he was a twin. His twin was also present, and not that it matters. After this, they said goodbye because they were all freaked out, and my mom was pissed, and everyone was blaming each other for moving the piece on the board. Anyways, they all went home and basically forgot about the whole thing. Years later, that CJ was out driving on a gravel road when he ended up crashing into the ditch and dying. The first one out of everyone there, and the creepy thing is that when the police were done investigating, the crash, they said, the tire flew off because someone purposefully loosened the lug nuts on his tire. So, ever since she told me that story, I've been too scared to try using any Ouija board.
I've gone back and forth on the idea of posting this story somewhere for a long time, and after searching through a lot of subreddits, it seems like this is the best place to discuss it. I still have my reservations, though. Will people ask questions I don't have the answers to? Does it feature cliches that will make people question the truth of my experience, as I've described it? Is this the best form for it? In any case, I'm just going to go for it. I'm kind of looking for answers, I guess. But I barely even consider myself a member of the paranormal realm. When I was younger, I lived in a haunted house. Seriously. But it's been a while. I just want to share this and see what people make of it. I get the impression that you might be more experienced in this than I am. All right. So, several years ago... I was doing my undergrad studies at a large university in Pennsylvania. This even happened in 2005, maybe 2006. I was dating a girl, Aaron, at the time, who was big into New Age ideas, paganism, magic, and the like, and I did learn some cool ideas from her. Eventually, I met some of her like-minded friends. And in our conversations, it came up that one of the rooms in the oldest building on campus caused two of them, a guy and a girl who were dating, to experience a lot of psychic distress. Kyle had gotten nosebleeds in the classroom, and Julie often got disoriented or frightened when she was there. Someone in our group had the bright idea to sneak up there one night, and of course, we all went for it. It was me, Kyle. Julie, Aaron, a medium named Audra, her friend Sharon, and another girl named Keisha. Sharon and Keisha, like me, had had a lot of supernatural experiences in the past, but don't consider themselves mediums or sensitives or anything of the sort. So, one night, we bought a novelty Ouija board from Walmart, a glow-in-the-dark one, because why the hell not, and started doing our thing. At first, the planchette didn't do anything, but then it started twitching, and eventually it was whipping around, choosing letters that made no sense to any of us afterwards. Kyle was writing the letters down. Then, out of nowhere, Audra started many convulsions. I don't know how else to describe it. Her eyes rolled up, and she started spasming and making these horrific pig noises. Not just snorting and squealing, but belting those noises out like I never thought a human would be able to. She started crawling her way to the door. The planchette was going crazy. And when Kyle jumped at her to keep her from heading towards the stairs, which were directly across the hall, I think, we all kind of snapped out of it. Audra was a small, slim girl, and it took three or four of us to keep her from leaving the room. And all the while, there were still horrible noises coming from her. And we all had this incredible sense of danger or foreboding. There wasn't a terrible smell or anything like you read about sometimes. But it was truly terrifying. Not to be anticlimactic here, but after that, we packed everything up, went back to my crappy apartment over a crappy pizza shop, and stayed huddled together for quite a while that night. I swear I threw out that Ouija board, but years later I would find it under my bed at my parents' old house when I was packing up to move. I can't swear a 100% to throwing it out, but I also can't imagine why I would have held on to it and brought it home and then stowed it away under my bed. Seriously, any thoughts or similar experiences or any comments would be great. Alright, here's an article and one of my experiences with Ouija boards. History of the Ouija board. Ouija boards first started appearing in the late 1800s. In fact, the first Ouija board was sold in a Pittsburgh toy shop and was almost identical to the boards sold today. A board with letters A through Z, numbers 0 through 9, the word goodbye, and the word yes and no, 
as well as the teardrop-shaped planchette used to move around the board with the window for viewing the letters. The advert for the Ouija board in a newspaper sold in New York mentioned that the board was proven to work at the patent office and described it as being mysterious. Although Ouija boards sold today aren't quite as sturdy as the board sold back then, a few things hold true from that initial advertisement. Ouija boards are mysterious. The patent was proven before it could go through at the patent office, and many, many people, including experts in the field of paranormal and psychology, believe that these deceptively simple boards can offer a link between our world and the next. Ouija board stories started cropping up as soon as the first boards were sold, and many of them have no real scientific explanations. Ouija board experiences. When we talk about the Ouija board experiences, or think about stories of a Ouija board gone wrong, we need to think back to why Ouija boards were invented. Back in the 19th century, Americans were more than a little bit obsessed with spiritualism, and this was by and large born out of the need to communicate with lost relatives, largely due to the fact that the average lifespan was less than 50 at the time. Spiritualism fits well with Christianity, and activities such as seances could occur right after a Sunday sermon. People started to use Ouija boards to communicate with lost loved ones, and their own Ouija board experiences started to cement what they'd always thought, that spiritualism could help them communicate with the dead, and that once everyone had passed on, it didn't mean that they were gone forever. This helped many, and does still help many people, find solace in loss and death. Although, of course, there were many people that took advantage of these people, faking paranormal events in order to gain money and exposure. Although some of the events surrounding Ouija boards were definitely exaggerated or outright completely faked, we've heard of enough true Ouija board stories to realize that there is definitely something spooky about this wooden board. Scary Ouija Board Stories there are plenty of Ouija board stories out there. A quick Google and you'll find hundreds almost immediately. One of my favorites is this one from an online story forum about Ouija stories, which also includes a nice little anecdote about shadow figures. Here is that favorite story. Quote, My brother's friend played with one at his house and all hell broke loose. Their family would see pennies and marbles being thrown down the hallway. One day his mom was doing yard work and saw a dog, and when she called the dog, she said that it suddenly had an old man's face. Things got so awful that they had to call a priest to do an emergency exorcism. To this day, they still see black shadow figures following them." End quote. My Ouija Board Story I also have my own Ouija Board Story. I have a very close friend whose mother practices white wicca. So we followed some of those instructions for setting up the Ouija board with about four or five other girls. We were around 14 at the time. One girl was the leader, and she had to set up what was known as a safe circle, a circle of salt that enclosed us, the Ouija board, the table we were working on, and the glass we were using as the planchette. The salt, according to Wiccan lore, was to keep out negative spirits that meant to do us harm. Only the leader could break the circle, using a knife to cut it, sprinkling the salt back down to seal up the circle. Although my story isn't particularly scary, it's safe to say that that was the night that I truly realized that I believed in the supernatural. We communicated with about five different spirits, learned a few names, and felt a tickle on the back of our necks. A few of us also had our hair pulled, and we realized after using the board for another hour or so that it was likely that the spirit pulling our hair was a toddler who just wanted to play. None of us felt scared, and even though I was initially a little bit worried that I wouldn't be able to sleep, that I'd lay awake worrying about everything that happened and all the spirits in the house, 
It ended up being one of the most peaceful nights sleep I have ever had. Are Ouija board stories real? Bad Ouija board stories and scary Ouija board stories can be the stuff of nightmares, but they also can be the stuff of folklore. Whenever Ouija boards are discussed with certain skeptics, you always get one response. Someone at the table is pushing the glass. Back when the original game was popular at parlor events, it was not uncommon for a small child to hide under the table with a magnet and move the planchette around with said magnet. Skeptics and psychologists alike tend to believe that even if no one at the table believes that they're pushing the glass, they may well be subconsciously giving it a little nudge simply because everyone at the table wants something to happen. In fact, everyone at the table might be pushing it. But how can everyone be pushing it when you're putting only the tiniest bit of pressure on the glass or planchette, placing just your fingertip onto it, making sure that you don't place any weight onto it? We'll never know for sure, but when we hear stories of a Ouija board ghost, it's easy to believe in the lore. Conclusion Many people have stories of a Ouija board gone wrong, like this quick story from an online reading forum that I had mentioned earlier in the article. Quote, In high school, my best friend and I bought a Ouija board and got into her car to go to a park to play with it. After a few minutes, the feeling of absolute dread came over me. It felt like someone I loved had just died. I felt nauseous and had a heavy heart. It was so sudden that it startled me because I'd just been so pumped. I suddenly could not stop bawling, so I turned to my friend and she was crying too. Without even speaking, we were experiencing the exact same thing. We turned the car around and as soon as we did, the feeling stopped. It took us years to finally touch the board again and that was to throw it out." End quote. It isn't uncommon for spooky or downright terrifying paranormal activity to occur when a Ouija board is used, but they can also be used for good. Not all Ouija board experiences are scary. Not all Ouija board stories are evil. Some are perfectly peaceful encounters that help to bring closure between relatives or friends from the other side. Some, admittedly, are a little scarier than you might anticipate. If you pick up a Ouija board, make sure that you take reasonable precautions such as the Wiccan outlines mentioned above. And if you're still unsure, it's probably best to leave the Ouija board entirely alone. Well, to keep it short and sweet, since I've already shared this story. I was playing with a girl, and the child that she aborted talked to her, asking her why, saying he was her son. I would never ever get an abortion after that. I didn't even know she had one. And after, she was bawling her eyes out, so I know it wasn't a trick. But since this is about Ouija boards, I always like to post the rules to make sure you stay safe. These things are dangerous. If you do not know what you are doing, the Ouija board can be extremely dangerous. These are rules that you must follow. There are evil spirits that can harm you if you invite them into your realm. You must always be careful with things that you don't fully understand. The main guidelines you want to stick to are Number 1. Do not leave the planchette on the board unattended. Ever. If the planchette is on the board, make sure someone is holding it at all times. Number two, always say goodbye at the end of a session. Make sure the planchette goes to goodbye as well. If you do not, it's like setting a phone down without hanging up. The person could linger on the other line. Number three, never invite an entity to make a noise, to show its presence, or to invite it near you, ever. You do not know what it is and what its intentions are, so please do not ever ask them to show themselves. 
Number four, don't let the planchette go from A to Z or one to zero, either forwards or backwards, because this is an incantation for a spirit to get into the human realm. If this happens, stop the planchette and say goodbye until it moves to goodbye. Number five, don't ever play it in a cemetery. This is just asking for trouble. The dead do not want to be disturbed. If someone goes to your house while you're resting and continuously calls you outside the door, I'm sure you wouldn't be very happy either. Number six, don't ever let the planchette make a figure eight circle repeatedly. This is also an incantation to pass into the human realm. Stop the planchette immediately and end the conversation. Number seven, always play with respect. Imagine a Ouija board as an online chat room where you post your telephone number and wait for someone to call you. You have no idea who is on the other line. Respect whomever you're talking to or don't play. You could be asking for consequences. Some tips I advise you are, start a conversation by asking if there is anyone who would like to speak with you. Patience is key. Just like a slow internet connection, it may take a few minutes to get a response. Don't bombard the board with questions. Ask something and wait a few minutes. If you don't get a response after a few minutes, try asking again. You may be having difficulty getting the answer you seek because of the way you're wording your question. Try changing it up a little and you may be able to get a better response. The way you word things is very important. Yes or no questions are usually the easiest for a spirit to answer. It's helpful to have paper and a writing utensil around to write down the session, especially if they are spelling out a word for you. Just make sure that you or another player has a hand on the playing chat at all times during the session. If you're worried about talking to a good spirit and to avoid evil ones, you may very well ask them if they come with the light or simply by asking them if they are good spirits, but be careful. Sometimes demons will lie though. Most will be honest and have no shame in telling you that they are a demon. However, it won't ever hurt you to be cautious. And lastly, please don't use the Ouija board if you do not take it seriously. You can put you or others in danger. It is not a game. It is an oracle. It even says it on the board. Enjoy your time, but stay safe out there. I have a terrifying story about a Ouija board. I got a call from my cousin who said that he, his brother, his dad, and his best friend were using a Ouija board in their basement. Prior to starting, they took a large porcelain doll out of the room because it was creepy and placed it in an adjacent room face down on a pile of towels. My cousin took a short break because the board was just spouting nonsense and he went to take a shit. His dad and brother and friends started asking the board questions without him. One of the questions was who was in the other room. It just started spouting random numbers and when my cousin came back into the room, his brother said that it wasn't working that they were going to put it away, and he showed him the answer to the last question he had asked. And he said, Dude, that's my social security number. Then they started to talk to whatever started spewing answers out. He told my cousin he would die in the Air Force. At this point, they tell the entity they are communicating with to prove itself. It then spelled out the word, doll and they just sat there like, what the fuck? They opened the door to check on the porcelain doll they had laid in the other room. And when they opened the door, the doll was standing up right in front of the door, staring right at them. Everyone freaked and ran out of the house. His best friend burned the Ouija board, and I think he temporarily went nuts for a few months. My cousin, for some reason, then joined the Air Force and is on a base in Europe now. When I was about 14, 
My best friend had a sleepover birthday party. Being the silly little girls we were, we decided to make a Ouija board to use, not really knowing any of the rules, like making it say goodbye. After an hour or so, I wandered off to read some tarot cards and watch the rest of the exorcist with the other couple of girls who didn't want to commune with spirits. Here's where it got weird. After I left, the spirit talking to my friends changed, as in it switched to a different spirit altogether. His name was Max, and he was looking for me. I've never known a Max in my life. My friends yelled out what he was saying as it moved, and I was writing off as them teasing me until he started giving them information about me that no one at that party knew. Things about minor abuse I was facing and other little things. That freaked me the hell out. I begged for them to stop playing, even after Max tried to convince me that he was not going to hurt me. My friends were awesome and stopped playing before I started crying, and I thought that was the end of it. The next time a Ouija board came out was the next year, and only one girl from the original party was among the group. We were baking a cake, so when the buzzer went off, she and I headed up to take it out of the oven. When we got back to the group, another girl turned to me and asked, Who's Max? Apparently, he stuck around after that first time. If my friends want to use a Ouija board, they don't invite me over unless they want to speak to Max. He's always around. A few times in my life, I've heard a voice call out my name. It usually makes me stop for a minute. No more, but at least twice, had I not stopped, I would have been in the path of a car going too fast to stop before it would have hit me. I strongly believe Max has stuck around to be helpful, but had we not pulled out that Ouija board, I would have never known anything about him. I have never used a Ouija board, and I warn those that ask about them to stay away. If you haven't had experience with one and don't understand what they really are, you could be starting something that gets out of control. Back to the board. Having said that, my mother had an experience when she was a young woman. Her and a couple of friends were playing with the board one evening. When they were through using it, the friends said their goodbyes, and my mom went about cleaning up. She was alone with the board and wanted to keep using it. People, the board is not your personal magic ball. It is a tool that could open a portal from the other side. Who knows what could get through? My mother's spiritual guardian is her grandmother on her father's side. She is most likely where I get my gifts. My mom decided to ask another question, but when she put her fingers on the planchette, it moved on its own. It spelled out, You need to call, and included a local number. My mom wasn't about to call a phone number she didn't recognize, but when she placed her fingers back on the planchette again, it spelled out, I said, you need to call, and it included the same phone number. At this point, she decided to call the number. It turned out to be the home number of a local spiritualist, medium, channeler, and minister, the Reverend Marnie Kosky. The woman that answered was very annoyed. She said, If you want an appointment, you will have to call the church. This is the reverend's home number. How did you get this number? By then, the reverend got on the phone and asked who she was speaking to and how did my mom get her phone number. Mom told her the whole story. Reverend Kosky said that mom's grandmother wanted her to get rid of the Ouija board and to never touch it again. The reverend also said my mom using the board, her grandmother had to cross the bail to protect mom while using the board and she was too busy to deal with such nonsense. So there is your Ouija board story. My mom got rid of it as instructed. Break it into seven pieces and throw it away or bury it far from home. Note, a lot of people think setting a haunted item on fire is the best way to get rid of it and neutralize it. Wrong. The fire releases the energy of a haunted object 
and can cause mayhem in your life. Good luck, and please make smart choices. When I was a young teen, my best friend and I spent a summer surfing the Ouija board. Mostly, we just asked silly or mundane questions, and mostly we got answers that seemed to fit. There was never a specific spirit or entity associated with our Ouija board explorations, and we never felt threatened in any way. Until the day that all changed. One day, a specific personality started to communicate with us. He was male and very forceful. He would tell us to do things, harmless things like taking a poster off the wall or something, but still, it was weird. I asked him his name, in which he provided. I don't remember it anymore, so I'll just call him Gordon. I asked him where he had lived before becoming a spirit. He gave an address in a nearby small town. I never went to this town, so I had no idea if it was real or not. But I had a map so I could look it up. It was very much real indeed. I asked my sister to drive me there. I was still too young to drive just to check it out. My friend was spooked and didn't want to go, so my sister and I go to this address, an ordinary-looking house in a wooded cul-de-sac. Nobody was around, so I knocked on the door. No answer. I'm not willing to give up, so I knock at the next-door neighbor's door. A guy answers. He looks like he's maybe in his 50s or 60s, too young to be old in my eyes, but older than my parents or the parents of my school friends. I asked him if he knew a Gordon and if he ever lived in the house next to him. He thinks for a minute, gets a little far away look in his eye, then says yes, someone named Gordon did used to live there. But he disappeared about 15 years ago and nobody knew why or what had become of him. He couldn't tell me anything more, just said he didn't remember anything about Gordon. Other that, he lived there, and then he didn't. I couldn't wait to get home and tell my boyfriend. I couldn't wait to pull out the Ouija board and find out more. When we did, Gordon came through right away. He was more aggressive than ever, insisting we do this and that. Draw this, gather that. It felt creepy, even though none of it was hurtful or inappropriate. But it just felt wrong. I asked why he wanted us to do these things, and he only grew more insistent, more edgy, more dangerous feeling. I said, no, we're not going to do it. Why do you want it so badly? He understood that I had drawn a line that I wouldn't cross. So he told us if we'd done what he had asked, then he could get us to trade places with him. Whatever the fuck that meant. And then there was this demonic laugh spelled out over and over again on the board. Damn. Poke my eyes out with a stick so I never have to see that again. It freaked us both out, and that was the last time we ever touched the Ouija board. Alrighty, dear listeners, this brings a close to these true Ouija board stories. I'm sorry it's cut a little short, but that's all I could find without repeating stories I've told on here before. I'd like to take a moment and thank the reform members of Back to Ashes, Tina Mead, Colt Stone Wolf, Inner Scare Wifey, Luz Crispin, Timmy Slayton, C.A.G., Denise S., Samantha Place, Stephanie McLaren, Corpse Lover, Normie D.W., Chrissy Elias, Cindy Cleveland, and Patty Sneeze. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you're awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, please take care of yourselves. I'll be reading to you soon. Peace, love, and light to you all.